to tonight's OSAA Class 2A Championship Volleyball Match. Sportsmanship is a top priority and it is critical to the success of high school activities. The OSAA and the participating schools ask for your support in letting the players play, the coaches coach, and the officials officiate as you positively support your team. It's all about respect. Respect the game, respect others, respect yourself. That is sportsmanship. The officials for this match are Fawn Bearwalt and Cynthia Harbour. Now let's give the teams for this evening's 2A state championship match. The visiting team is from the Tri-River Conference. They are the Bulldogs of Culver High. From the Mountain View Conference, the Wolves of Days <laughs> Now the members of the Culver Bulldogs. Freshman, Kayleen Aldrich. Freshman, Emma Hope. Sophomore, Jasmine Martinez. Freshman, Hannah Lewis. And now tonight's starters for the Culver Bulldogs. The Libero, a sophomore, Jasmine Ruiz. A junior, Gabrielle Alley. A sophomore, Andrea Ritano. A freshman, Lindsay Schoenaker. A sophomore, Shailene Little. And senior, Cassandra Fulton. The Bulldogs are coached by Randy Vigiano. And now, the members of the Days Green Bulls. Done. 
And last but not least, my apologies for not mentioning the final starter tonight for the Cobra Bulldogs. Let's hear it for senior Johnny Cleaver. And now the starters have been finished and completely finished, and it is now time to play volleyball. The 2012 OSAA US Bank Les Schwab Tires 2A Volleyball State Championship on the line here this evening. Ridgeview High School at Redmond, Oregon is the host. The Days Creek Wolves, champions of the Mountain View Conference, take on the Culver Bulldogs. Just a little ways away from Redmond, the champions of the Tri-River Conference. Good evening, hope to find you well as we join you tonight on OSAA.TV. I'm Eric Olson bringing you coverage of this 2012 state championship matchup. For the Days Creek Wolves, they tried to make it two in a row after beating Portland Christian in straight sets one year ago. The Culver Bulldogs are trying to win their second volleyball state title, their last one was in 1987 when not a single player on the court was alive at the time. The starters for Days Creek include a 5'8 junior outside hitter, Isabella Goldman, a 5'11 junior middle blocker, Stevie Lee Jansen, a uh, six foot middle blocker and junior, Juniper McDonald, a 5'8 setter, Jasmine Harrington, a 5'7 setter, Rachel Ellis, a five-foot libero, Markel Owens, and a five-six uh, outside hitter in Cheyenne Depew. For the Culver Bulldogs, the starters include a 5'10 junior, Gabrielle Alley, a 5'6 sophomore, Andrea Rotano, a 5'6 freshman, Lindsay Schottaker, a 5'7 senior, the setter, Johnny Cleveland, and we are underway. Rounding out the uh, starters for Culver as the ball is into the net by Days Creek. A six foot uh, sophomore in the player of the year out of the Fry River Conference, Shailene Little, and then the 6'3 middle blocker, the senior, Cassandra Fulton. So 1 0 in favor of uh, the team in black with orange and white as their trimmings, and now 1 1 as the team in red with white numerals ties things up. The Days Creek Wolves come in as the OSAA's number three team based on the RPI criteria. And the Culver Bulldogs, the number four team. Culver 25 and five. They went 13 and one to win the Tri-River Conference. And there is an ace for Ellis. Rachel Ellis, the junior, gets an ace to put Days Creek in front two to one. The defending state champions are the Wolves. 32 and three their record. They went 12 and 0 to run the table in the Mountain View Conference. At a service there, Ellis gives it right back. Ron Dunn in his 26th season as the head coach at Days Creek said, we can't serve like we did last night. They put 16 balls into the net. He said, if they do that against Culver, they will lose. Culver gives one right back. And so now it is three to two. And serves, it's change coming with subs for each team. Emma Hoke, a 5'3 freshman into the game for Cassandra Fulton on the Culver side of the net. And Juniper McDonald is back to serve for Days Creek. Overpass on the serve, tipped down, and then Goldman gets the kill out of it. Wasn't the prettiest, but Goldman gets it to work, and now Days Creek's advantage is 4-2. to two. And Randy Vigiano, the head coach for Culver, chases that one all the way down, the coach of the year in the Tri-River Conference. Nick Vigiano, her husband, is the assistant and is the statistician specialist with the iPad. Just long on an attack from the middle for Culver, and Days Creek is up 5-2. to two. These teams actually met last year. In the quarterfinals, Culver lost to Days Creek, three sets to one. Culver ended up finishing fourth last year, beating Faith Bible in a five-setter. Little in the middle, and that's gonna be into the top of the net. Early on, Culver is looking the team that is wearing the fact this is a state title match quite heavily. Six to two in favor of the Wolves in red. And another very tough serve out of system, little in the middle. 
Overpass, and now a chance for them to get a little bit more in system. Little Asco with the left hand tip. Sent back to the block. Big swing there by Jansen, but it's Doug. Days Creek, a little bit too hard. Big swing there by the setter, Harrington. Jasmine Harrington is actually considered one of the more powerful hitters on the team. Little right into the block. Harrington tips with the left hand, and Culver can reset. Little tries again. Top of the block and a kill. And a big celebration, almost a sigh of relief for the Culver Bulldogs. They're a team, they're, they look like one of those baseball or basketball teams where everybody's got a different high five or some type of celebration for every single different player. Great chemistry, you can already tell, for these Culver Bulldogs doing the best they can to stay loose. A ball Helen handling error, though, puts them behind 7-3. to three. And a change coming for the Bulldogs. Hannah Lewis, a 5'8", just freshman into the match for another freshman. The 5'6", Lindsay Schottaker. Jump serve coming for Goleman. Isabella Goleman, what a great volleyball player she is. She's going to get the dig on that end. And out to the near side. Cheyenne Depew, a senior, sends it over. Ball handling violation called on the set by the freshman, Lewis. And Ace Creek's advantage is 8-3. to three. Culver early a little rattled here. It does appear playing in what is a very new situation for them for the 2A state title. Over on two. Depew is just long with her attack. And that'll give a point to Culver. And they're down by 4, 8-4. to four. Shailene Little, the player of the year in the Tri-River Conference, stands at six feet tall, back to serve. The sophomore lining up. A little jump float, drives that one pretty hard to the back line. Right into the middle, Jansen is dug, and it's by Cleveland, the setter. Miscommunication, Little and Oak. And Emma Oak, the freshman, getting out of the way of the sophomore, Little. And Little says, that's my fault, I should have taken it. Days Creek takes the point to go in front nine to four. Jasmine Harrington back to serve. Days Creek, Ron Dunn calls it a hybrid 5-1-6-2. As Harrington and Rachel Ellis will both set. There's a little tip kill. Gabrielle Alley gets the kill on the tip. Nine to five, their deficit is four. And Andrea Rotano to serve and just long. And then she will come out for the libero. A 5-5 sophomore, Jasmine Rees. 10 to five, Days Creek's advantage. Set number one of the 2012 2A Volleyball State Championship here on OSA.TV. Depew takes a big swing, and it's off the hands of Ruiz and for a kill. Cheyenne Depew, the senior, didn't have a single blocker in front of her, and a timeout is going to be called by Randy Vigiano, bringing her team over to the bench here. Depew, just 5'6", but out there on that left pin, she's not getting over what should be a block, but there was no block there. And at that point, with no block in front of her, it really put Jasmine Ruiz in between a rock and a hard place because it would have been an incredibly tough dig to make. Days Creek, a little chant on the far side. Culver on the near side. An advantage in distance traveled. Culver not far away at all from Redmond. Just off to the north a bit. Days Creek had to travel much farther from over on the west side of the state. Had to cross over. Mountain passes, although when they crossed them, not yet filled with snow. Quite a bit last night here in this area during the quarterfinals and the semifinals. 11 to 5, Days Creek's advantage in set one. On two, tipped by Fulton. The 6-3 middle blocker gets her hands on that attack by Depew. And a ball handling violation called on the set before it could even get out to Alley. 
Three consecutive points now, 12 to five is the advantage for the defending state champions. Dace Creek, not only the defending state champions, they've been in now three consecutive state title matchups. They lost to Bonanza in 2010, excuse me. In 2010, they lost to Bonanza to finish sixth. The last title matchup before last year, 2003, they beat Elkton. In 2002, they beat Cove, a couple of 1A titles. Service error makes it 13 to six. Culver trailing right now by seven as Lindsay Schoeniker is back in and will be serving. So for Days Creek, this is their fifth time into a state title matchup. They've got three wins. The one loss was way back in 1991. Point for Days Creek, makes it 14 to six. In fact, Ron Dunn, when he was coaching in 2002, 2003, that's when his daughter was playing. Volleyball state titles, the only state titles in the trophy case at Days Creek High. 14 to six is the lead for the Wolves as Depew is back to serve. Picks out Ruiz and it sends uh, Cleveland racing. Apparently that one was inside the antenna and Days Creek made it not matter. With the big swing by Juniper McDonald to get the kill. 15 to six here in the first set in favor of Days Creek, putting a comfortable margin between themselves and the Culver Bulldogs. Isabella Goldman dug in the back there by Little. And a free ball over from Culver. He'll tee up Goldman again. Little digger again. Alley tips. Tough pass, tip at the net, and Ellis wins it. Culver's got control. Little the pipe, too long. 16 to six, and another timeout. Randy Vigiano has used both of her timeouts in the Days Creek Wolves. A very good start for them. As Ron Dunn, cool, calm, and collected, asked him, what's the difference? And he said, well, the key difference between last year and this year is we had five seniors, and we obviously missed them, so we had to really fill all those roles because that team, they really they, they played so hard, and they served so well. I think that... The service game, is it was his concern coming in because they struggled last night in the semis. And if they're able to get the ball in play, he really does like his chances. His team is very quick, and he's got the opportunity here to get this team into this championship, in part because they've had such a tough road to get here and run the tie table through the Mountain View Conference and now looking for win 33 which would give them the 2012 state championship. They're up 16 to six here in set number one. Cheyenne Depew, a senior, is back to serve. Back into the back row for Little, and it's set back by McDonald. That's way too easy for Juniper McDonald. The set wasn't great for Little. She was hitting it from near the back line. And so for McDonald, it was like a serve that she was able to block. 17 to six. Allie, Doug, sent back by Cassandra Fulton. Way too easy for Fulton there, but her team's down by 10. Still time left here, race to 25, got a win by two. Best three out of five sets. Little, it's not down yet. Tip back over by Ellis. In the middle, Fulton is dug. Tip by McDonald and it's gonna fall for a kill. Culver during that point thought they had won it. And at one point the fans celebrated, the team started to celebrate as well. But Days Creek kept the ball up, and they kept the point going. That one's given right back with the service there. Ten-point lead still. Culver trying to dig back. 
McDonald. Little keeps it alive into the back row for Alley. Big swing there by Goldman. Kept up. Days Creek will try to tee it again. Into the back row this time. Jansen swing into the net. 18 to nine. One point at a time. That's the mantra right now for the Culver Bulldogs in set one. You can't get it all back with one swing. Goldman takes a big swing there. Up by 10 again at 19 to nine. Substitution coming, Emma Hoke will come in and play defense. And the middle blocker, Cassandra Fulton, will come out. Hoke is just a freshman for this Culver team. Service error, Juniper McDonald. Almost looked rushed. Days Creek's libero, Markel Owens, comes back on. She's a junior. White shirt, receives that serve. Tip there by Goldman. Just kind of picked out her spot and angled it right at the defender she wanted to. Goldman's kill makes it 20 to 10, and she's back to serve now. Big jump serve coming off the top of the net. Little keeps it alive. Alley will roll it. Kind of a paintbrush shot there. Tipped over onto by Jansen. Little big swing down the line for the kill. Shaylee Little. What a swing there. Now she's back to serve. Her team down by nine. Little tees this one up. In the running line drive. Now they're going to go back to Jansen. She'll get the kill. 21-11. On another really nice swing cross court by Stevie Lee Jansen. Stevie Lee Jansen, Isabella Goldman, both played integral roles last year. Despite five seniors, some of the underclassmen for Days Creek Definitely got their time and played a role in winning that state title. Now they're here trying to win another. Jansen in the middle. Just goes for a little punch tip with her left hand. Block sends it back. Culver trying to dig back from down 10. Set over by Rotano and now another free ball. Alley poked up by Jansen. Days Creek playing really nice defense here in set number one. Alley again on the left side. And again dug by Goldman. Ball handling violation though. Erases some really good defense by Days Creek. Despite all that, their lead is still nine. 21 to 12 as Cassandra Fulton comes back in for Emma Hoke. Andrea Rotano serve. Ball handling violation called on Harrington. Did her very best on not a great pass. And now it's 21 to 13. But Days Creek just four points away from taking set one. Jansen dug by Little. Little's had to play a lot of defense when she's been in the back row. Alley too far off the court, couldn't cut it back. 22 to 13, Days Creek chipping away. As into the match, Sadie Kroom, a 5 a 7 sophomore. And back to serve is Jansen. Fulton down the line. At the back wall, kept up by Goldman. And Little has to play it on the back row. And then a ball handling violation by Cleveland. What a job by Isabella Goldman to chase that ball down. All the way back to the wall, back wall. You almost never seen it played there. Now it's a 10 point lead again for Days Creek. They're two points away from set number one. And now they're one point away from set number one with McDonald getting the point. Set point, 
The Days Creek fans up on their feet. One finger lofted above their head. And the float over. Right into the middle, the swing by McDonald. It's tipped for the kill. And set number one. 25 to 13, Days Creek cruises in the first set. And Randy Vigiano's got to find a way to get her team settled in to playing in this state championship match. Days Creek with the advantage after one set played here at Ridgeview High School on OSAA.TV. My family and I were enjoying a big vacation in Tahoe. After a great day on the mountain, our car wouldn't start. I got a jump, but it kept dying. Everyone in town said, Go to Les Schwab. When I pulled up, George delivered. He quickly tested the battery and confirmed it was a goner. While he installed a new one, I finally got my first relaxation of the vacation. It's nice to be treated like a neighbor so far from home. I'm Clay Gilman, and that's my Les Schwab story. Les Schwab, doing the right thing since 1952. You see us at the start of the day on the company phone list that's a few names longer. You see U.S. Bank on busier highways, on once empty fields. Every day, you see all the ways all of us at U.S. Bank are helping grow our economy, lending more so companies and communities can expand, grow stronger, and get back to work. Every day, you see all of us serving you around the country, around the corner. U.S. Bank. On stats, I got off track. So, Could I get a printout? Yeah. Welcome back to Ridgeview High School in Redmond. It is the OSAA U.S. Bank Les Schwab Tires 2012 2A Volleyball State Championship. The 2A tournament has been at Pacific University and since 2003 until this year. Pacific, when the boxers re-added football, it added some congestion on Saturdays. Ridgeview High School, a brand new high school, brand spanking new opened up this year. Has no seniors at it. It is just freshmen through juniors. All the seniors in Redmond stayed at Redmond High School. Either way, brand new school, the home of the Ravens. As you can see, purple and silver are their color scheme. Andy Cotting, the athletic director, moved down here from the Dallas Watonka High School. He's the head football coach. Keith Blyer is the voice you hear in the background, is the boys' soccer coach. And so they have been a welcoming and great host here for this tournament, as well as the 1A state tournament. I know a lot of the coaches have enjoyed being at this venue. So Ridgeview High School, the new host of the 1A and 2A state tournaments, and that's where we are here tonight. OSAA.TV bringing you the coverage. Days Creek bringing the smack down there in set number one. They cruised over Culver in the first set, 25 to 13. Early on, I don't think it persisted through the entire set, but early, Days Creek was the team that had been here before. And Culver, who is incredibly young, looked that way and looked like the immensity of playing in a state championship early on was getting to them. They started to settle in, but the deficit was just too big. Big swing there. Isabella Goldman gets the kill, and Days Creek up 1-0 here in set number two. Back to serve is Cheyenne Depew, and she's going to get an ace off of the hands of Jasmine Ruiz. Depew, one kill in the first set on five tries. She's got her team out to 2-0 right now off of that ace. Little in the back row. Now try in the middle, rolled over by McDonald. Fulton moves to her left, gets it over, but kept up by Harrington. She's called for a lift. And so now Culver's gonna get a serve here, down two to one. Gabrielle Alley back to serve. Jasmine Ruiz, the libero, and the white shirt out there for Culver. Down into the bottom of the net. Lindsay Schoenaker is also in the back row right now. Shailene Little moves back into serve-receive. 
Up in the front, the setter, Johnny Cleveland, wearing number six. In the middle blocker, Cassandra Fulton. Those are the ones on the floor right now for Culver. Three to one, Days Creek's advantage. High set, Little runs up on it and drills it. Cassandra Little, excuse me, Shailene Little, it's Cassandra Fulton, had 12 tries and two kills in the first set. She's got three now in the match. Nice lefty swing there by Jasmine Harrington. She's the setter, but she's also one of the hardest hitters on the team for Days Creek. Right in the middle. McDonald is denied by Rotano. Andrea Rotano at just 5'6", turns back, six feet tall, Juniper McDonald's attack, and we're tied at three apiece. Allie in the back row drills it. Up to set Ellis. Overpass on the set. But Days Creek collects again. McDonald will try again. That time she puts it down. Juniper McDonald. Juniper McDonald started out well. Four kills in that first set. She's got five now in the match. And it's a 4-3 lead for Days Creek. As McDonald is back to serve. They'll try Little in the middle, and she hits the line. Down in the very far corner, right in front of Ron Dunn, the head coach for Days Creek. Not really much you can do other than go, that's a really good swing. And that's going to be an ace. Johnny Cleveland, the senior setter for Culver, and an emotional leader for this team. The ace can get you fired up. 5-4, Culver on top. They've settled in now as Goldman makes an error. It's 6-4. to four. Any early jitters appear to be gone, and Culver's just doing what they've done all season, playing good volleyball. They're up by two. They've got a Days Creek team that's not going to go anywhere. Little on the left side, just hits the back line. Seven to six. Shailene Little, six feet tall, just a sophomore, and that was a huge swing. And now a three-point lead. But a service error ends the run on the serve of Cleveland. And Isabella Goldman is back to serve. Hannah Lewis is on for Culver now, and she'll be setting. Here's Lewis right now, bump set into the middle. Little moving to her right, sets it, but wide. The idea was there, she wasn't gonna be able to get a good swing, so Little tried to set, but it was high in arcing, and because of that, it allowed Days Creek to know where they were on the floor and know it was going wide. If that's more of a line drive, they might have to play it. They'll try a short set this time with Little. Out wide to Pew. No, it's going to be a ball handling violation. By the way, we haven't introduced uh, those two contributors to tonight's 2A state championship match. The official up top, Fawn Bearwalt, is from Malheur County. This is her first ever state title match. And the down official, Cynthia Harbour of the North Coast Officials Association is Jasmine Harrington pokes one into the back corner for a kill. And Days Creek deficit is eight to seven. Harbor, by the way, the North Coast Association official, a couple of years ago did a 4A state title. She's done a couple of these state titles before, but for Bear Walt, the up official, making her first ever officiating opportunity. Emily Hopfer into the match. And she's got to kill her first appearance, her first swing, and we're tied at eight in the second set. Days Creek took set one. Allie will roll one over, diving save there by Owens the libero. And then off the top of the block, Days Creek takes the lead here in the set. They led it 2-0 and 3-1. 
And then Culver came back to take an advantage. Little ass to serve, receive. Now she'll get it right back, but it's way in the back row. Owen on the left pin, has to go with the left hand tip. Kept up there, nice draw by Rotano. Free ball coming from Alley. Into the net on the set to the setter by Owens. It was too far. And that ends a three point run and we're tied at nine. Cassandra Fulton, the senior, back in, replacing Hoke, but a service error by Rotano. Back and forth, and I would say both coaches right now would suggest that serve-receive serve isn't their problem so much as just getting serves in with more consistency on both sides of the net. Cleveland, the setter, has to send a free ball over. That pass is not great either. Owen has to hit it long. Tied at 10 on the attack here. And right now, neither team is forcing a ton of these points. Unforced errors, both sides of the net were tied at 10 and set two. Big swing, set back by the block of Fulton, but then her attack is blocked back. Days Creek up by one, they'll make a change. Rachel Ellis in, hop for out. Allie coming in and has to send a free ball. Tip sent back by Fulton, and now a lift is going to be called on Days Creek. We're tied at 11. Look like a couple of people on the Days Creek bench wondered if Fulton maybe interfered there on the other side of the net. Goldman hits one into the back row, dug by Ruiz. Little, deep and dug by Depew. That's a swing by McDonald for a kill. Boy, when these two teams get in system, they're both incredibly powerful attacks. We just right now haven't seen them in system with consistency. 12-11, Days Creek. 12-12 on a service error. Four service errors for Days Creek in the first set. A handful more here in set two. Ron Dunn, the head coach, said, if we make as many service errors as we made in the semis last night, Culver will beat us. Right now, though, in spite of the service errors, some comfort. At least some more. A junior comes in as a defensive specialist as McDonald is back to serve. Picks out Little with a line drive. Little will get it right back. Hits the back line. Dunn says no way on the near side. Asking for help for the up official. Ron Dunn is on the back line. That's where he lines up as the coach at the back side of his bench. That serve is wide. 14-13, Days Creek up. Little, by the way, on that last kill off the back line. Four in this set and six total. Really tough serve, but it comes back over. Into the middle, tipped over by Jansen. The soft one gets a kill. Jansen had one in the first, one now in the second. Try a little again. That one goes right past Goldman for the kill. Fifteen to fourteen days Creek's advantage. Shailene Little is back to serve. The powerful right-handed swing of the sophomore. Tees up this serve and floats it into the middle. Out wide, Depew's off the top of the net with her attack. Allie, a little 
changeup gets a kill out of it. Her first of this set and second of the match ties it at 15 apiece. It has been back and forth and back and forth here in set two. Culver serving, tied at 15 with Days Creek. After the Wolves picked up set one. That's a kill for Depew. Cheyenne Depew gets a swing that time. She's had a couple of attacks out on that left pin that have hit the top of the tape and taken a lot of their power away. But that one didn't hit anything and fell in front of the Culver defense. Depew wants it again. She gets it again. That one goes high. It didn't hit the hands. And so it's 16 apiece. A change coming for Culver as Hoke will come out and uh, Fulton will come back in. So the 6-3 middle blocker is back in the front row for Culver to try to wreak havoc on the attack. They set it away from her over to Jansen, but it's sent back by Alley on the block. That was a really good decision to set that ball back and away from Fulton who just came in and Alley one-on-one -on -one is able to turn it away and give Culver a 17-16 lead and make it 18-16 after an ace. Andrea Rotano and a sub coming as Rachel Ellis is in and Emily Hopfer is out for Days Creek. Rotano all the way over on the far right side. Then she's got to move over all the way across the court on defense. Jansen dug by Rotano. Into the middle, Alley has to come get it as the set wasn't home. Out wide, Depew, top of the net, that's four touches. Block didn't touch it, it was sent back by the tape. It's a four point run for Culver and they're up 19 to 16 in the second set. Jansen tips that one off of Alley. Stevie Lee Jansen. Call that tooling the block. The block was there in front of her and she just found the side of the arm. 19 to 17. Days Creek down by two as Jansen's back to serve. Little has to play into the middle for Alley. They get it outside for Depew, sent back by the block. Still up, Jansen can't keep it alive though. Sub coming for Culver's, they take a 20 to 17 lead. Lindsay Schoenecker will come in. Hannah Lewis will come out. And Schoenecker's back to serve. The freshman and honorable mention selection out of the Tri-River Conference tees it up. Big run up there, McDonald. Didn't matter, Culver was in the net. Days Creek cuts the lead down to two for the Bulldogs of Culver. And now a timeout. Ron Dunn wants it anyways. He got the point there and now at 20 to 18, he wants to chat with his team. This is not as much what Days Creek isn't doing now on their side of the net. They're playing all right. It hasn't been the cleanest second set, but it's more about what they're doing over on the other side of the net. The Culver Bulldogs have settled themselves in and are a lot more comfortable, it appears here, at Ridgeview in this second set. They're getting better passes as well. It all starts with the pass. A setter can be the best setter in the world, but if she doesn't have the ability to select out hitters, She's not going to be able to do that much. And Culver's passed the ball better to Johnny Cleveland here in this set. Although a lot of it is just the hands of Shailene Little and that golden right arm. She's got five kills in this set. Culver's up 20 to 18 as Depew serves it into the net. 21 to 18. And now a libero change as Owens will come back in 
for Depew on the Days Creek side. And Owens will receive the serve. Out wide, Goldman's been quiet on this set but gets that kill. She's got six in the match now. That's her second of this set. She just has had to spend a significant amount of time in that back row. And the contrast between the two squads is this. Culver will set little anywhere on the floor. Days Creek is more apt to set front row players. They're not going to pipe it as much. Little is dug in the back by Jansen. Good defense by her. Goldman sets it over and deep to Alley. In the middle to Fulton. And Fulton is going to get the kill eventually. Just her second of the match, but it makes it 22 to 19. Three point lead, three points away from evening this match at a set apiece. And Fulton is back to serve. Punches one just long. About as close as it could be without being in. Days Creek down by two as Juniper McDonald is back to serve. Little is picked out. Little will take the swing into the blockers for a kill. Twenty-three to twenty. Cleveland serve picks out Jansen. Tipped by. Hit the antenna, so it was wide. It's going to be a point for Culver. And a set point for them. And a timeout for Days Creek as the Culver fans come to their feet. Just a point away from evening this matchup. Days Creek cruised in set one, 25-13. Culver has been able to pull away here. It was a run when they were down 16-15. And the Bulldogs were able to put together a string of four consecutive points and five out of six to go up 19 to 16 and then 20 to 17. We've changed leads about a dozen, half dozen times so far in this set. Ron Dunn's team a point away from having to go at least four sets. After last year, they swept Portland Christian three sets at Pacific University for the 2A title. It's going to be on the serve of the setter, Johnny Cleveland. The senior tees it up. Not a good pass. Set over by Owens. Little on the left side. Tips with her left hand. Days Creek a chance, tipped on two. Harrington gets the kill. 24-21. Hannah Lewis will come in. She'll be setting here. Who's she want to pick out if she gets a good pass for set point? Big serve, top of the net. Little keeps it alive. It's into the net, but Lewis under the net with that one. 24-22. And Isabella Goldman's serve that time was aided by the fact it was short and it tipped off the tape. She'll tee up another jump serve. Roll it wide and Culver's tied it. A set apiece. 25-22. Culver takes set number two. What a piece. And we're playing at least four here in the OSAA U.S. Bank Les Schwab Tires 2A state title matchup in 2012. And you're watching it on OSAA.tv. At Les Schwab, along with great prices, our tires come with the kind of protection most other places just don't give you, which includes free flat repairs, equal value replacements, pre-trip safety checks, and more for the entire life of the tire. With the other guys... Well, you just never know. So why is free protection on your tires good to have? Lifetime protection. That's our best tire value promise. Les Schwab, doing the right thing since 1952. You see us at the start of the day. 
on the company phone list that's a few names longer. You see U.S. Bank on busier highways, on once empty fields. Every day, you see all the ways all of us at U.S. Bank are helping grow our economy, lending more so companies and communities can expand, grow stronger, and get back to work. Every day, you see all of us serving you around the country, around the corner. U.S. Bank. Rundun still outside of the huddle, deciding how he wants to put his lineup out there. So the possibility is that Days Creek is going to spin the wheel, so to speak, and maybe try to get the lineup a little bit different. For Culver, it's pretty clear you know what you're going to get. You're going to get a lot of Shailene Little. You're going to get a bit of Gabrielle Alley, and she's done well for herself here tonight. And then... For Dave's Creek, the attack has got to deal with Cassandra Fulton. And there's a fine line between setting away from Fulton all the time and Fulton taking away your best hitter. And I got to wonder if that's what Ron Dunn is trying to kind of work around here with his lineup as we go into set three. Set one to Days Creek, the defending state champions at the 2A level, 25-13. Set two to Culver, 25-22. Johnny Cleveland, Shailene Little, Cassandra Fulton in the front row. Gabrielle Alley, Andrea Rotano, and uh, Lindsay Schottaker in the back row. Although, Rotano is out, and the libero, Jasmine Ruiz, is in. Alley to serve. Culver in the black with the orange numerals. Days Creek in all red. Isabella Goldman's swing is going to end up a kill. She's got seven now on the match. Tied with Little as the leading attacker. Back to serve Rachel Ellis. Stevie Lee Jansen in the back row right now. Along with Cheyenne DePew up front. Jasmine Harrington playing setter. Juniper McDonald and Goldman. Little's big swing. And now she's the leading attacker in the match with eight kills. One apiece here in set number three. Got to win three sets to be state champion. We play sets one through four to 25. Set five, if we get there, will be played to 15. You got to win all of them by two. A change coming. Elisa Moore, a junior, will come in and play defense in the back row for Rachel Ellis. As Culver's up 2-1. to one. Goldman sent back by the block. Goldman tips it again, wide of Little for the kill. Goldman burst onto the scene, leading Days Creek to the state title a year ago. Albeit with plenty of help. Days Creek is a very balanced team. It is... One of the things that makes them so special is at the 2A level with these schools of this size, you don't often find this many volleyball players of this caliber. But Goldman is definitely one of the premier volleyball players in the 2A classification. And Shailene Little is making her presence known here in 2012. She was known as a freshman, but now the sophomore campaign is just that much more special. That attack by Little was long, and it's three apiece as Goldman is back to serve. She has that jump serve, rolls the ball with her right hand and then swings. Little can't get there. The set from Lewis was not on line, and it's going to be a Days Creek point. They're up by one. A lot more top spin on that serve, but it's kept alive. Little will take a big swing from the back row. Overpass, Little handles it. Cleveland back to Little. She has to just tip it with her left. Joust at the net, won by Rattano. Rattano gets a kill here, her first of the match. And we're tied at four apiece. Little comes over to the near side. 
as Randy Vigiano, the head coach for Culver, sets her up and tells her where she wants the serve to go. Jansen is dug in the back by Hoke. Free ball coming. Days Creek, not a great pass. They'll give it right back to Jansen. Can't quite make it work. Handled by Owens. Tipped over on two and down by Harrington. Days Creek up five to four. More will come out and Emily Hopfer will come back in. As Harrington is back to serve. Very tough serve, goes as an ace. Cleveland was in the area, but Harrington's ace gives a two point lead for Days Creek. Believe it or not, largest of either team here early on in set three. Not a good set and it's gonna be knocked down by Jansen. You set it from one side of the net to the other, obviously it's gonna come back and probably hard and that's exactly what happened. Seven to four days Creek, give one back with the service error. Just as I was about to say, Days Creek was starting to settle down their service game. And they give one back. Andrea Rotano is back to serve. Culver is definitely, if you're marking down categories, in the advantage right now in the service game. They're down seven to five here in set three. We're tied at a set apiece. Jansen nails that one. Cleveland didn't have much of a chance. Stevie Lee Jansen, one-on-one -on -one out there on the right side was going to be very tough to stop. Now she's back to serve, her team up by three. Tough one right at the top of the net and a ball handling violation called on Fulton. Hannah Lewis having a bit of trouble right now. The freshman putting that ball a little bit too close to the net. And now each little a couple of times and Fulton that last time have had trouble getting any type of swing at it. Although in part, Lewis has got to get better passes as well. She'll send a free ball over. Days Creek in system. Anywhere they want, Depew dumps it down. Finds a hole in the defense. Cheyenne Depew's got a third kill of the match. And Days Creek out in front 10 to five. What did Ron Dunn say to his team in between sets two and three? They rolled in set one, 25-13. They're starting to roll here in two, but Gabrielle Alley pulls one back with a nice swing. Now Lewis comes out and Shoniker comes back in and she'll be back to serve. Days Creek 10, Culver 6. High in the air for Alley and she gets a kill. A lot of the Culver attack is predicated on nice high sets that allow the hitters to really line it up, get a good run up and a big swing. That kill puts him down by three. Ruiz jumped early and couldn't keep it alive. Just mistimed her jump on that one, diving for the ball. And so it's 11 to seven. Fulton calls for it in the middle, sent back by the block of McDonald. Alley this time. Goldman tools the block for the kill. She's got eight now, and a timeout for Culver's. They're behind 12 to seven here in set number three. And uh, Randy Vigiano, Trying to get her team settled in. I don't think anymore it's the immensity of the moment. I think now they're just, they're not passing the ball very well. Days Creek is serving better. They had that service error. It came at seven to four. 
but they are serving much better and they're putting a bit of pressure on Culver's serve receive. Culver's serve receive has not been giving the setters very good passes. Hannah Lewis has been running all over the court and so she hasn't been able to put the ball in the best place for her attackers. So Culver right now, if they can get the passing back under control like they did in set two, they can easily get back into this set because it's only 12 to seven. We run to 25. For Days Creek, it's status quo if you can, girls, for Ron Dunn. Cheyenne Depew back to serve here. The senior tees it up. Little is picked out and serve received just about every time. Alley tools the block. Looks across the net and shouts in jubilation as she puts that kill down through the blockers. And now she's back to serve. Her team down by four. Dumped on two. Ellis. Probably was lining that one up for two sets and gets a kill out of it. Her first of the match, 13 to eight. You just have to wait until the blockers commit and you know the defense is back because a lot of your attacks are deep. And then there's that hole for the setter. But there it is. Gabrielle Alley, a third kill here in this set. She is keeping her team in. It's 13 to nine, Days Creek by four. Fulton serve, very tough, and it's gonna end up as an ace. 13 to 10. And the senior Fulton who stands at 6-3 will line another one into the back row. And again, a tough one to handle. They get it out to McDonald, it goes deep. Allie gets her hands on it, but no more for Culver. The kill makes it 14 to 10. Juniper for McDonald, eight kills now. She's tied with Isabella Goldman for the Days Creek lead. McDonald is out. Markel Owen serving. It's gonna be Little. Not a chance. Fourteen eleven. Shailene Little. Now ten kills in the match. Overpass on that one. Little again this time left side. Sent back by the blockers. And the block was there. Stevie Lee Jansen, Jasmine Harrington, 15-11 Days Creek as they return Schottaker into the match. Excuse me, Schottaker out, Hannah Lewis into the match. Goldman takes the serve. Little, just long that time. Culver wants a tip, nobody in the white officiating jerseys saw it. I didn't see it either, 16-11, Days Creek's advantage. Goldman rolls this one for an ace. Took a little off of it and dumped it in front of Lewis. First ace for Goldman to go along with eight kills. And Culver up against the wall now, 17-11, their deficit. Goldman wide that time. Just a five point deficit right now for Culver. And they've got a top server in Shailene Little back there. Really a top everything. Little goes with the knuckleball. Back set to Jansen, set back by the block, but it is wide off of the hands of Alley. Jansen gets the kill. Her third of this set, sixth of the match. 18 to 12, Days Creek on top. just long a second consecutive service error by Days Creek when they got to serve Moore comes out Hopfer comes back in 
Emma Hoke out. Cassandra Fulton back in. Jansen off the hands of Little over towards the Culver bench and Lewis can't quite get there. Stevie Lee Jansen's got four kills here in this set. And it's 19 to 13. Another big difference here, Days Creek is creating their points. They've created 11 of their 19 points here in this set. That is of significance, because when you're forcing points, it means you're really doing everything well. You're passing, the service is distributed well, and then you're getting kills. And you'll take those free points when Culver gives them to you. A timeout for Culver after their attack here. And Days Creek is on top 20 to 13. Here in set number three, Days Creek cruised in set one, 25 to 13. Culver fought back and played extremely well in set two. Took it 25 to 22. Days Creek has really started to pass better. It is really the difference for them is when they are receiving serve well, it makes a world of difference because they can go anywhere they want with their attack. And again, they really do mix it up. Isabella Bella Goldman doesn't have to take every swing. She's got just two kills in this set. Doesn't have too many more swings than that. This set, it's been Stevie Lee Jansen. But goldman has got two. Jansen's got four. Junior Mc McDonald's got two. Jasmine Harrington, the setters, put one down. Rachel Ellis, the setters, put another down when she's been setting. And then Cheyenne DePew has been the one who hasn't taken that many swings this set. Days Creek up 20 to 13. And the serve here in set three. Alley, big diving dig by Goldman. And it's gonna be floated over off the top, rolls on the net, and still alive and long on Depew's swing. Not a bad idea for Cheyenne Depew. There's no block in front of her. But she just didn't have the timing exactly right. And so the attack is long and the Culver deficit is six. Shailene Little barking out encouragement to the ones in the front row, but it's a service error for Shoniker. 21-14. DePew is back to serve. The senior finds Shoniker just had the service error. Blocked there by Goldman. A little tip attempt by Cleveland. That's going to make it 22 to 14. A sub coming for Days Creek as Ellis will come back in for Hopfer. Little and Fulton were in each other's way there. Little was going to try a pipe set. Really, it should have been Fulton. And Fulton was in position to send a free ball over. Little trying to do a little too much on that swing. 23-14, Days Creek two points away. Fulton off the block. It's tipped back towards Culver. And now four hits. And Culver here, last two plays, specifically communication breakdowns, have led to two Days Creek points and now set point. Alley will take a huge swing for a kill. She's got four in this set. And it's 24 to 15. Sub coming for Days Creek. Hopfer will come in. And Ellis will come back out. As Gabrielle Alley, the junior, is back to serve. For Culver, she tees it up. Not a great pass. Goldman doesn't have much she can do with it, but... Still some trouble. Fulton down into the back row, dug by Jansen. Little. Off the hands of DePew for the kill. 24-16. And now right back. Ellis in. Hop for out. Point after point here for Ron Dunn on those two. Late in this match. 
as Days Creek is looking for a set win. It's a ball handling violation. Unfortunate for Fulton, that took a wicked hop off the top of the tape. And she just had it handcuff her, and she's called for the lift that makes it 25 to 16 and puts set number three in the pocket of Days Creek. They won set one, 25-13. Culver took set two, 25-22. Days Creek back with set three, 25-16. Culver's gonna need set four, or Days Creek is gonna lift the blue trophy for a second consecutive year. It's coming up after this from Ridgeview High School on OSAA.TV. Do you know someone? At Les Schwab, along with great prices, our tires come with the kind of protection most other places just don't give you. Which includes free flat repairs, equal value replacements, pre-trip safety checks, and more for the entire life of the tire. With the other guys, you just never know. So why is free protection on your tires a good thing? Lifetime protection. That's our best tire value promise. Les Schwab, doing the right thing since 1952. You see us at the start of the day. On the company phone list that's a few names longer. You see U.S. Bank on busier highways, on once empty fields. Every day, you see all the ways all of us at U.S. Bank are helping grow our economy, lending more so companies and communities can expand, grow stronger, and get back to work. Every day, you see all of us serving you around the country, around the corner. U.S. Bank. We continue here our coverage on OSA.TV, the 2012 OSAA State Championship. For the Culver Bulldogs, it was a quick conversation between sets three and four. They need set four. They don't just need it, they have to have it. Down two sets to one in the 2012 2A State Championship. For Culver, it has been a while. They lost to Kennedy right near the start of play in the Tri-River Conference. They haven't lost since. After losing that Kennedy match, they ran the table the rest of the way to finish first in the Tri-River Conference. They've got 25 wins to five losses, 13 and one to be conference champions. Culver's got a plethora of wrestling state title trophies. They've got a football trophy from a few years back. They do have a volleyball state championship trophy. 1987, they beat St. Paul at Lane Community College in Eugene. Then it was the B classification title. It's been a little while. So Culver is going to try to dial something up. All the losses were very early. They lost to Hepner, who was at this tournament. They lost to Do for a 1A team twice in about a week span, and they lost to Powder Valley, who were the 1-8 state champions from earlier this evening. But for a long time, they haven't faced adversity like this. They're down two sets to one in the state championship match, and now they're down 1-0 here in set number four. As serve-receive fails Culver on play one. Cheyenne Depew is back to serve, and now she'll give it right back with a service error. Out on the floor for Days Creek in red. They're going to make a change. Rachel Ellis will come in. Emily Hopfer will come out. Also in the front, Juniper McDonald. Isabella Goldman is out there along with Jasmine Harrington. Depew, who had the serve, and Stevie Lee Jansen, who received that serve. Goldman tools the block for a kill here in set number four to give Days Creek a two to one lead. For Culver up front, Johnny Cleveland, the closest to the net right now. The setter waits for serve receive in the back includes Shailene Little, the libero, Jasmine Ruiz who got her hands on that one. Gabrielle Alley was the second touch. Also out there, Cassandra Fulton and rounding out the six is Lindsay Schoeniker who had that ball fall just in front of her on the line for a kill and a 3-1 lead for Days Creek. Nice cut shot across the court there. And back to serve is Ellis. Ruiz has trouble with another one. And a free ball coming over again from Culver. Goldman on the left pin, pounds it down. 
If it's possible for double digit kills to be quiet, Isabella Goldman's 10 have been relatively quiet here tonight. Culver is doing a very good job of really trying to give disincentive to Davis Creek to use Goldman too much with their block. Davis Creek lead is now five to one. Here in set number four, the Wolves are up two sets to one. And Culver has not been able to get in system yet in this set on serve receive. And another kill for Isabella Goldman. Six to one and a timeout for Randy Vigiano. It's seven serves and not a single one has been passed across the 10 foot line to where the setter wants to be. That is not going to be the formula for success. On the Days Creek side of things, again, Ron Dunn's message, the 26 year head coach, it's gotta be something along the lines of, all right, now look, they're gonna start to try to take Isabel Goldman away again, and, and they probably will because they've got her a couple of good swings here early in this set. In fact, she's got three kills here in this set already of the six point Days Creek is put on the board. So they're gonna have to work in Stevie Lee Jansen. They're gonna have to work in Juniper McDonald. They've got to disperse the ball well, like they have all match, all season. Days Creek up six to one out of an incredibly quick timeout, albeit I think a very good one for Randy Vigiano because her team needs to figure out serve receive right now. Ruiz an overpass. Goldman again, top of the block, it's kept up by Alley. Alley will get a swing out of this one and get a kill out of this one. Six to two as Culver gets point number two here in this set. Cassandra Fulton is back to serve. And that one's all sorts of discombobulated. It'll be a point for Culver. It's a game of runs, sport of volleyball, so Culver obviously doesn't need to be incredibly concerned by falling behind six to one, especially if they can settle themselves in with this serve receive issue. Now the block is huge. Andrea Rotano, Shailene Little, and there wasn't a chance for Juniper McDonald's swing. Culver's now down by just two, it's six to four. Fulton again on the serve. That one is well short. Slaps her. Hands to her side, she's coming out. Emma Hoke will come in to play defense in the back row. Days Creek seven, Culver four. McDonald will come out and into serve is Markel Owens, the junior libero. And her serve didn't even make it to the net. It is fisted over by Jansen, but obviously that is at the very least slightly illegal. Seven to five, Culver's deficit is down to two. And that's a ball handling violation. And Culver's deficit is down to one as it skips through the hands of Owens. 7-6. And we've got somebody tying a shoe in the front. Andrea Rotano was tying her shoe. And the down official is going to let them replay this point. Because I don't think she ever gave ready to play and so they're going to replay this point because Rotano's tying her shoe and Cleveland had teed up the serve. Cleveland will try it again. It's still 7-6. Days Creek on top. Jansen off the top of the fingertips of the block and then down in front of Cleveland for the kill. Jansen had four kills in set three. She's got eight now in the match. Days Creek up by two, eight to six. Isabel Goldman, big jump serve, but well wide. The toss wasn't perfect on that one, obviously, but that one was a little bit tight to her, and so she caught it on the outside of her hand, didn't catch that one square, and it kind of squirted towards the Culver bench. Culver down by one. 
Depew ties it up with a less than great swing on that left pin. Shailene Little back to serve and Culver's been able to make a few runs on her serve despite the fact she's not up in the front row to attack. That jump line drive floater leads to an ace and now Culver's got a lead. Gotta love the confident energy that Little plays with. She's good, she's great, and she knows it. And just enjoys being able to share that with her team. Four points in a row, because she knows as good as she is, she needs the other five as well. And so it's just fun to watch because I think it rubs off. I think her and Fulton both, and Cleveland as well. I don't wanna forget the setter Cleveland emotional leaders for this team. And the way they go, it, it seems the way the team goes. Culver's lead is 10 to nine. Jasmine Harrington is back to serve. Here in set number four, Days Creek is up two sets to one. Free ball coming over. Right in the middle, Jansen. Little keeps it up, over towards the bench, kept alive by Hoke. And she ends up in the lap of a teammate for a second. They'll try out wide, tipped over, just in front of the 10-foot line. Cheyenne DePue with the kill. She's got one of those in each set of this match. And it's tied at 10. Harrington a little run ends on a service error. They're going to be darn close to the 16 service errors they had last night. Ron Dunn said if they did that, they wouldn't win. I'm not going to say they're not going to win, but they <laughs> might win in spite of what he was hoping would be a much improved service game. The attack is wide there by Harrington. Her heavy ball travels just wide of the court. And so 12 to 10 Culver. Jansen, cross court dug by Cleveland. Alley coming into the middle of the court to roll it. Out wide, Depew dug by Rotano. Alley sets it over. Days Creek will try it again in the middle. Jansen tips it over. Alley keeps it alive. Set on two by Cleveland deep. And a ball handling violation called on Hopfer. It was a set where not, a point where not a whole lot of people on the floor looked comfortable by any stretch of the imagination. Everybody was trying to do things out of their comfort level, not necessarily for any other reason other than there were problems with where the ball was placed in front of them. Jansen gets a set kill there. No, they're 14 to 10. 14 11 is the score now. That's what I thought. They've corrected the scoreboard. It is 13-11. That is, that is not us up there. The scoreboard was jumping ahead of themselves. And we're looking around going, where the, I, I'm looking around going, where'd the extra point come from? It is now 13-12. Culver up by one. Little swing. Take it in the back row. Depew, just long. Culver up by two, just about midway through set number four. Lindsay Schoeniker dribbles that ball about a half dozen times, now tees up the serve. McDonald tools the block. Junior Mc for McDonald off of the hands of Cassandra Fulton, the senior middle blocker for Culver, couldn't quite steer that one back to the other side of the net. She got there though. And that's gotta be what Culver's trying to tell Fulton right now is look, you're there. You'll get that one blocked back to their side next time. Bump set to Alley out wide. She's gonna tool the block as well, but it comes over. Fulton will try to go deep and it's gonna work off of the hands of Harrington and high up off the back wall here. 
at the brand new high school gymnasium of the Ridgeview Ravens in Redmond. That's where we join you here this evening on OSAA.TV. Culver 15, Days Creek 13. Now Culver 15, Days Creek 14 on a service air. Now the 2012 OSAA US Bank Les Schwab tires to a volleyball state championship. Little out left side, and it is dug by Depew, and then nobody's there. Nobody's there is a misnomer because McDonald and Harrington were both there, and nobody called it. Back out to a two-point lead for Culver. Communication breakdown on the last point, and a block on that point. Number seven, Shailene Little rejects number seven, Juniper McDonald. And out is 17 to 14 in favor of the Culver Bulldogs. Nice dig by Little. It's gonna be, excuse me, the dig by Alley. Little was turned away. Little right through the hands of the blocker, Juniper McDonald for the kill. And now it's a four point lead for Culver. Back to serve is Cassandra Fulton. Roll shot by Goldman. Couple of players in the same place and that's gonna be blocked back by Harrington. Could have argued there were four touches there anyways when Rotano and Cleveland ran into each other. It looked like both got their hands on the ball. Either way, the point goes to Days Creek. They're down by three. McDonald to serve. Picks out a little over pass sent back by Jansen. The dig is wide by Rotano. So Jansen will get the kill out of it. Little off the block. Nice save there by Moore. One-handed dig just to keep the point alive. And then it wasn't a great pass, so it's a free ball. Alley is long with the attack. What a save by Elisa Moore, the junior. She's a defensive specialist. We don't say her name a ton, but that one just stuck her hand out and was able to get that ball back into play to extend the point. And now Days Creek is down by just one. Little right in front of Moore. Nineteen seventeen. Another kill for Shailene Little. There is a ball handling violation in the block after the swing by Jansen. Days Creek's point cuts the lead of Culver down to one. Isabella Goldman back to serve. And she's going to get an ace. She's got a couple here in this match, and it's tied at 19. 19 apiece. Goldman again. Good one again. Falls all over the place. Little can just send it, and it's going to come back over Culver another chance. This time, Cleveland can go anywhere she wants. Little left pin. They say the block got it back. Days Creek wanted four, said the block didn't touch it. Point plays on. And a free ball coming over off the hands of Hoke. In the middle, Jansen gets that one right off of the hands of Cleveland. Jansen's got five kills here in this set, and it's 20 to 19. And a timeout given to Culver. Days Creek, champions last year, sixth place in 2010.
They had five seniors on last year's state title team. When you graduate five, the fact that you're back and trying to get win number 33 a year later speaks in part to the system in the program. I asked Ron Dunn, the head coach, did you guys have to change the way you played it all, losing five seniors? He said, no, we do what we do. And I said, so you kind of, you get the girls and you make them and teach them to your system. He said, yeah, I've got a system that works. He, he has a system that works and has had success. They're not done yet. It's 20 to 19, Days Creek does have the lead. Out of a timeout for the Culver Bulldogs. Goldman served that time. That wasn't really a situation. Sometimes you will see a coach, quote unquote, ice the server. I don't think that's what was happening that time with Randy Vigiano. She needed to settle her team down a little bit, but it worked anyways. 20 apiece. It is just wide. Culver up 21 to 20. Little, a tough serve, set on two. Harrington can't quite get the kill out of it as Culver keeps it alive. And then Depew hits it into the top of the net. What a scrambling save by Culver. 22 to 20. Culver three points away from sending this to a fifth. Jansen kept up by Cleveland. Alley sets on two. Jansen will get it right back in the middle. Dug by Cleveland again. Little will send the free ball over. They let it go wide, wow. There was a moment like that in the 1A match earlier this evening, and I was pointing out that often at the state championship tournament, they'll play that just because you don't risk giving a free point. You try to earn the points yourselves. That time, everybody for Days Creek was so comfortable with where they were on the floor, they let it go wide. And now they're down by just one. Alley on the near side, hits the back line with a kill. Gabrielle Alley, kill number eight on the night. Coming out, Emily Hopfer coming back in, Rachel Ellis as Andrea Rattano, the sophomore, tees up the serve. Two points away from a fifth set on the Culver side of the net. Roll shot sent over. In the middle, Fulton. Dug there by Harrington. Culver another chance. Out wide for Alley. Off the block for a kill. The partisan Culver crowd on their feet. A timeout for Days Creek. As the Culver Bulldogs are a point away from sending this to a fifth. Well, the sets Days Creek have won have been comfortable. 25-13 in the first, 25-16 in the third. It was 25-22 when Culver won the second set. And right now it's 24-21. Culver a point away from sending this to a fifth. Days Creek has only lost a couple this season. They lost to Reedsport just prior to the start of league play where they ran the table in the Mountain View Conference. And at the beginning of the season, they lost to Sutherland and Santa Am Christian in the first two of four matches. Culver fans on their feet with set point on the line. Although it's gonna be one more point that they're gonna have to stand because that one Makes it 24-22 on the attack here by Culver. Stevie Lee Jansen's the server. The junior. Service error. 
25-22. And we are going to a fifth set for a second consecutive state championship match. The captains, Stevie Lee Jansen on one side, Cassandra Fulton and Johnny Cleveland on the other side, will come to midcourt and meet with the down official, Cynthia Harbor, for the coin flip. It will be to 15, we'll play to two. Coming up on OSAA.TV. Fifth set to decide. At Les Schwab, along with great prices, our tires come with the kind of protection most other places just don't give you. Which includes free flat repairs, equal value replacements, pre-trip safety checks, and more for the entire life of the tire. With the other guys, you just never know. So why is free protection on your tires a good thing? Lifetime protection. That's our best tire value promise. Les Schwab, doing the right thing since 1952. You see us at the start of the day. On the company phone list that's a few names longer. You see U.S. Bank on busier highways, on once empty fields. Every day, you see all the ways all of us at U.S. Bank are helping grow our economy, lending more so companies and communities can expand, grow stronger, and get back to work. Every day, you see all of us serving you around the country, around the corner. U.S. Bank. Culver's out, it was a quick conversation. There's three minutes in between each set, and they were out after a minute. And honestly, if you look at the players on the floor, on the Culver side, they look up into the crowd and listen to them lead a chant. The parents here on the near side, the crowd is partisan for Culver, it is far closer for them. That means that all the parents are here and most of the grandparents are here who can be here on both sides. But for Culver, you can get more of the community to come as well. These Culver Bulldogs have fought back. Jasmine Ruiz waits to t come onto the floor. Johnny Cleveland with Ruiz right now. Big hug for Cassandra Fulton, the middle blocker. Gabrielle Alley. Shailene Little right in the middle of the floor together. Those two have played a huge role in getting us where we are. Andrea Rotano, Lindsay Schoeniker, and again I said, it seems like everybody for Culver has a different type of hand clap or shake or some type of thing. They, they honestly look like one of those baseball teams where you talk about the chemistry, and, and they look like they have so much fun together. And they fought really hard against a Game Days Creek team to get into this fifth set. Cheyenne DePew is going to serve for Days Creek. The Wolves in red, the Culver Bulldogs in black. Champions of the Tri-River Conference, Culver. Champions of the Mountain View Conference, Days Creek champions of 2A volleyball in 2012 to be decided soon. The attack is wide from Cassandra Fulton and Days Creek is in front, 1-0. So Depew is serving. Stevie Lee Jansen in the back row with her. Up front you've got Isabella Goldman along with Jasmine Harrington who's setting right now. Juniper McDonald and the sixth on the floor is Elisa Moore. Little, offset left for middle, is dug in the back row by Depew. Tool the block, Goldman gets a kill. Goldman has been steady Eddie for Days Creek throughout this match. Four kills in the first, two in the second, two in an ace in the third, three in an ace in the fourth, and now they, she's got one here in the fifth. Alley out wide. It's an overpass by Depew on the dig. In the middle this time, Fulton will go for the tip. Goldman keeps it alive, but it's an overpass again. Alley off the block for a kill. 
And she's had a heck of a match when it mattered as well. Four kills in the third set, three more in the fourth set. She's now got a total of 10 on the match. Days Creek up two to one. The alley's serve is dug by Depew. Goldman struggles with it, but does keep it inside the antenna. And that set, Cleveland mishandled it. Pats her chest, says, that's my bad. Trying to shake her hands loose here. This, like the start of the match, is another place that will really test not necessarily a team's confidence, but their coolness. Nice swing by Little. With the state championship down to a single set to 15, every point seems just a little bit more immense. Every pass that is not quite perfect, a little bit more frustrating. Overpass there. Joust to the net, chance at a swing that's missed, and it's tied at three. Jansen, dug by Alley. Little, down the line just long. Days Creek's point makes it four to three. And they'll make a sub as Emily Hopfer will come in. Moore will come out. Fulton comes out on the Culver side. Emma Hope comes in to play defense. Little on a pipe set, gets a kill off of the chest of Owens. Tied at four. Cleveland the setter to serve. And a ball handling violation off of the hands of Owens. Culver five to four. Ron Dunn trying to settle in his libero. The junior defensive specialist wearing the white shirt. And now a quick conversation. Stevie Lee Jansen has it with Fawn Bearwalt, the up official. It was about the Days Creek team punching the ball under the net out of frustration. That's going to be a little bit frustrating for Culver. A service error ties this at five apiece. Hannah Lewis, the freshman, comes into set. And out is Lindsay Schoenecker, another freshman. Lewis gets there, but the pass to her was not good. Six to five, Days Creek. An exchange coming. Rachel Ellis in. Emily Hopfer out. Goldman with the powerful top spin jump serve takes a little off of that one. Little coming at it. Long on the attack. There's a tip. And it's off of Goldman. She knew she had it. And we're tied at six on the kill for Shailene Little. Little is now serving and gets an ace. Her second of the match, and Culver's lead is seven to six. Remember, both teams have two timeouts. Little tees it again. Drives it towards Owens, and Goldman puts it into the net. Two point lead for Culver. Time out for Days Creek. Ron Dunn's gonna try to settle down the Wolves as they defend their state title, the Culver Bulldogs. This run put together here. Shailene Little, a kill, and then two good serves in a row. And it's eight to six, Culver on top. Race to 15, you gotta win by two. Culver's won the sets that have been tight. It's been Days Creek that had the runaways in sets one and three. 
So when the chips were on the table, Culver's really played pretty well. If Days Creek would be able to put a run together and seize hold of this set. But to do that, they're gonna have to receive serve better. Off of this line drive running jump serve from Shailene Little. The sophomore tees it again. The player of the year in the Tri-River Conference. Deep, just long on the attack by Jansen. Nine, six. And Little keeps running. Four in a row. From down two to up three. The serve is long. And Days Creek breathes a sigh of relief as the little run ends. And that'll probably be her last serve here unless we go to extra points in this match. 9-7, Culver up by two. Cleveland has trouble with it. At the net, poked over by Alley. They can go anywhere, they'll try the middle. Jasmine McDonald, excuse me, Juniper McDonald off the top of the net. Alley sets it over and it doesn't get over. Now, Days Creek is down by just one with Stevie Lee Jansen on the serve. Free ball coming over. In the middle, McDonald just a tip, she's into the net. Culver 10, Days Creek eight. Back to serve is Andrea Rotano. Top of the net, Jansen keeps it alive. McDonald out left side, sent back by the block of Fulton. Fulton makes it 11-8. That intimidating 6-3 middle blocker gives Culver a three point lead. Dumped on two, a ball handling violation called on Ellis. And now Culver's starting to count points. Ron Dunn wasn't happy with the call there. I think he felt like Rachel Ellis had executed properly that dump set. 12 to eight, Culver three points away from a volleyball state championship, their first since 87. Last year they finished fourth, beat Faith Bible three sets to two in the consolation match. After losing to Days Creek in the quarterfinals, three sets to one. 2010, Culver was out in the round of 16, although in 2010, defensive specialist Emma Hoke was just a seventh grader. Andrea Rotano was an eighth grader. Lindsay Schoenaker, a seventh grader. Shailene Little, an eighth grader. They must have had a heck of a middle school team at the time. Out of the timeout, 12 to eight. Days Creek down by four. Little bumps it towards the net, nobody there. And it's going to be 12-9. Right now, because of Culver's advantage, three points up with three points away, if they can serve receive and get themselves into system, they've got a dramatic advantage here. Although Alley doesn't get a whole lot on that. Nice overhead shot by Harrington just to keep the point alive and that's going to lead to a point. Boy, how many times tonight has Days Creek or Culver scrambled to keep a point going and it's ended up being an error on the other side, if anything, because maybe there's a little letdown. That's an ace, no letdown there. Really tough serve driven in by Stevie Lee Jansen. Check that, it wasn't Jansen, it was Ellis. And now a timeout for Culver as their lead is down to just one. Quick little three-point run, Rachel Ellis on the serve. She just got the ace. Days Creek, the champions a year ago. That was more like a coronation run for the five seniors and the contributors on this team. 
like Isabella Goldman and Stevie Lee Jansen. Three sets and really cruised to the title over Portland Christian. In 2010, when a lot of these key contributors were freshmen, Ron Dunn's team finished six, losing to Bonanza in the consolation match. Title in 2011 for Days Creek, title in 2003 and 2002. The only time they lost the title match was 1991 to Mount Hood Christian. Fulton, her swing is dug, but it's back over to Culver's side. Fulton will try again, but can only set this deep. Goldman has to scramble, and it's going to be a kill for Fulton. <laughs> Isabella Goldman saw that Fulton was going to have to set it and started to come in and the set was very deep to the back corner. Goldman had no choice but to play it. And so it's gonna be a kill for Fulton. She hasn't had a ton of those tonight, but that one was huge. Two points up, two points away for Culver. Allie hits the back line. Match points and championship points for the Culver Bulldogs. Tri-River Conference champions get a free ball over on the overpass. Fulton in the middle. Fulton finds the floor. Culver is champions of 2A Volleyball in 2012. Down two sets to one. Culver wins the fourth 25-22, and they won the fifth 15-11 to win the state title. The first for Culver in volleyball since 1987. The jubilation for the Bulldogs, the emotional team that has had such great chemistry all night. And now they will lift the blue trophy. Days Creek, a runner-up this year after winning the championship a year ago. They wore the state title crown as well as almost anybody can to defend it. Culver was game to take the title away. And now they will lift first place. Players of this match, Shailene Little, the all-everything for Culver. And on the Days Creek side, Isabel Goldman. Culver salutes their fans here on the near side. As the cheers continue to roar. We will have the trophy celebration for you. We'll give you those sights and sounds. We can at this point tell you the all-tournament honorees. On the first team, and boy, there were a bundle of them that were unanimous. From this match alone, Shailene Little, Isabella Goldman, both unanimous first team tournament selections. Molly Van Borstel of Weston McEwen, a junior, is also unanimous. Bailey Bennett, a senior from Hepner, unanimous. Reed Sports senior Monica Vaughn, also a first team all tournament selection. Cassandra Fulton of Culver, the senior, a first team all tournament selection. On the second team from this match, Jasmine Harrington, a junior from Days Creek. Junior Per McDonald, a junior from Days Creek. Stevie Lee Jansen, a junior from Days Creek. Culver junior, Gabrielle Alley. And then from Grant Union, senior Caitlin Slinkard. And from Reedsport, junior Gabby White. Culver wins the state title. And just listen to how I read that off there for you. On the first team, Isabella Goldman of Days Creek is a junior. On the second team, Jasmine Harrington, Junior Perton McDonald, Stevie Lee Jansen, all juniors. They're all going to be back. For Culver, Gabrielle Alley is a junior. Shailene Little, the unanimous first teamer, is a sophomore. Now, Culver is going to have to say goodbye to Cassandra Fulton, the big 6'3 middle blocker for him. But Hannah Lewis saw significant time setting is just a freshman. Jasmine Rees, the libero, is just a sophomore. 
You're also looking at Andrea Ritano, a defensive specialist, an honorable mention in the Tri-River Conference, just a sophomore. Emma Oak, the defensive specialist, a freshman. Gabrielle Alley, as we said, a junior. I wouldn't be shocked if these two teams did this again in about 365 days. They're so young, both of them. And they'll bring back so much. Obviously, for the seniors on both sides, this one is a final match on the volleyball floor in their high school careers. And for the Culver Bulldogs, obviously, it couldn't have ended better than it did for the setter, Johnny Cleveland, and the middle blocker, Cassandra Fulton. On today's Creek side, this isn't how you would script it for sure. For Cheyenne Depew, and Talia Perez wasn't even able to dress here this evening. But those are the ones who will be said goodbye to. A lot of these players are back. Days Creek will finish 32 and four on the season. The champions of the Mountain View Conference. Culver's Bulldogs, 26 and five. The champions of the Tri-River Conference winning the 2012 2A Volleyball State Championship. I'm gonna sign off for now. We will bring you the sights and sounds of the trophy presentations here as Days Creek will be honored as second place in 2012 at the 2A classification level. And Culver's Bulldogs will celebrate the OSAA US Bank Les Schwab Tires 2012 2A Volleyball State Championship. A five-setter, they win 15-11 in the fifth. Our producer is Matt Knapp. Our cameraman is Dylan McLeod-Lewis. Thank you for joining us here this evening. From Ridgeview High School, a great host in Redmond, the brand new high school has done well hosting this 2A and the 1A state tournament. Congratulations again to the 1A champions Powder Valley and the 2A champions Culver. I'm Eric Olson signing off for OSAA.TV. Good night, and we'll talk to you again soon.
a senior from Reedsport, Monica Vaughn. A junior from Days Creek, Isabel Goldman. A senior from Culver, Cassandra Fulton. Thank you. 